people stay away because they think this joke is too boring. They are jokeless. <laughs> <laughs> Chapter 34. Now in chapter 34, Job appealed to two groups of people. First, to the group that is wise and then to the group that has understanding. So, from verse 2 to verse 9, he appealed to the wise. And then from verse 10 to 33, he appealed to people of understanding. Then as he brought the chapter to a close, he put them together, the wise and understanding. I hope all these break, breakdowns make it easier for you to understand the chapter and follow. So verse 1, Elihu further, further answered and said, so like I said, he should have stopped the last chapter. So he continued, hear my words. You wise man. Remember, he was angry with Job, right? Aroused against Job. So he settled with Job in chapter 33. Then he was also aroused against the three friends, right? Now he point to them. Hear my words, you wise men. Give ear to me, you who have knowledge. For the, for the years test words and the palate tastes food. So he actually challenged his listeners to weigh the words, to chew on the words. Let us choose justice for ourselves. Let us know among ourselves what is good. Remember, he was addressing three older gentlemen. And he knows they are wiser, supposedly, not because they are older, but they are supposed to be wiser. And yet, he still said what he said. For Job has said, I am righteous, but God has taken away my justice. That means, he said, Job, Job claimed that God did not give him a fair trial. Should I lie concerning my right? My wound is incurable, though I am without transgression. So, verse 5 and 6. He was quoting Job. My wound is incurable, though I am without transgression. Verse 7. Now, Elihu made his conclusions uh, about Job. So, how did he describe Job? What man is like Job, who drinks scorn like water? Wow. That is a direct hit. Is hitting. In other words, who do you think you are? You know? What man is like Job? Is there anyone like you, Job, who drinks scorn like water? No, we all drink water, especially if you, you, you are in the desert, you're always thirsty. You just you, you, you chew to the front, to the back, front, to the back, and then uh, you know, gargle a bit. Then after that, you, you know, right? You just drink the water, right? So, scorn, scorn, uh, this punishment that is upon you, this, this difficulty that is, that is upon you, you seem to just take it down, you know, just as if it's nothing, you just put it down, drink it down. And so he said, you are despising the Lord's chastening. You understand? That means you are not taking the punishment seriously. You are despising it, you are just gulping it down like water. Who drinks, who drinks scorn like water? Who goes, talking about Job, who goes in company with the workers of iniquity? Meaning, Job, you have joined the people who have been committing iniquities. You are company with the sinners and walks with Wicked man. He is accusing Job. But we all know from Job chapter 1, verse 1, who said that Job was blameless? 
God Himself, blameless and upright. That's what God described Job. Who is Elihu to come and accuse Job? You follow me now? This young man uh, didn't know a thing and he was quick to make his judgment. And I thought, I thought he said in chapter 32, 33, verse 7. Chapter 33, verse 7. He said, Surely no fear of me will terrify you, nor will my hand be heavy on you. I will not be tough on you. I am not like the three friends. Hey, but you, your, your judgment are quite a direct hit, no. You accuse me of keeping bad company and walking with wicked men. I have joined the rebellious people. That's what you are saying. Verse 9. For he has said, it profits, it profits a man nothing that he should delight in God. Okay, this is really a false accusation. He's saying, Job said this, uh, for it profits a man nothing that he should delight in God. That means, if you uh, delight in the Lord, uh, I, I know from Psalms 37 verse 4, you delight in the Lord and He will grant you the desires of your heart. But this guy is saying, you delight in God, you got no reward, you get no benefit, you profit, you, you profit nothing. Uh, the rest of you just listen to the tape. <laughs> Verse 13. Who gave him charge over who gave him charge over the earth? Or who appointed him over the whole world? If he should set his heart on it, if he should go, no, if he should gather to himself his spirit and his bread, all flesh would perish together, and man would return to Dust. So Job, Job, if you just read, no, Elihu, if you just read what he said here from verse 12 to verse, verse 15, and man will return to dust. If you have understanding, verse 16, hear this, listen to the sound of my words. Should one who hates justice govern? Will you condemn him who is most just? God does not hate justice, so he can govern. But Job, you hate justice, you cannot govern. You know, Job in his past, uh, when he walked, uh, even the leaves and the trees bowed down, remember? Mm -hmm. uh, the people, they all kept quiet, all bowed down to him. And he, he, he was like the king and... He was seated there, and then he was like the general and so on, right? And he was like governing. But you don't like justice. You can't govern, but God can. Who, will you condemn him who is most just? Is it fitting to say to a king, you are worthless, and to nobles, you are wicked? Yet he is not partial to princes, nor does he regard the rich more than the poor. God will not, but man will. You look at every society, most countries in the world, most, especially the developed countries, there are two sets of laws. One for the haves and one for the have-nots. You understand? There are people with deep pockets, huh? they can buy themselves out of uh, crimes, pay lawyers, pay this and that, right here and there. But for the poor who got nothing, how to? Because the judge won't listen to me, I never bribe the judge. But not our God. He is not partial to princes, nor does he regard the rich more than the poor. For they are all the work of his hand. So everyone is equal in God's sight. In a moment they die, in the middle of the night. The people are shaken and passed away. The mighty are taken away 
without a hand. For his eyes are on the ways of men, and he sees all their steps. Remember last week I said when you, you tell God, you know, you can count my steps and so on. It talks about what? Transparency. So God, you can see all my steps. There is no darkness nor shadow of death where the workers of iniquity may hide themselves. For he need not further consider a man that he should go before God in judgment. He breaks in pieces mighty men without inquiry and sets others in their place. I know many of us are praying for the president, the new president of Indonesia. Okay. A lot of people are, are going are rooting for Jokowi. But then there's also a Prabowo. Okay. Um, uh, it seems like from the old school. Old school a bit uh, a bit different. Okay. So they want something, someone new, fresh. Uh, who, who promised reformation and so on. But you and I know, even Singapore election and so on, God establishes the government. God allows okay, certain people in certain seasons to rule uh, different nations. So he sets others in their place. Therefore, he knows their works. He overthrows them in the night and they are crush. He strikes them as wicked men in the open sight of others because they turn back from him and would not consider any of his ways. Now, nothing that that Job, that Elihu said here is wrong. He was addressing men of understanding. So the men of understanding were understanding because he didn't say anything revolutionary. He didn't say anything revelational. He didn't say anything new. He's just stating things of righteousness and justice. Verse 28. So that they cause the cry of the poor to come to him, for he hears the cry of the afflicted. When he gives quietness, who, when he gives quietness, who then can make trouble. And when he hides his face, who then can see him, whether it is against a nation or a man alone? In other words, God is in control. He does as he wishes. That the hypocrite should not reign, lest the people be ensnared. What we have seen, we are still seeing some hypocrites ruling nations. It is still true in certain places in the world. But God allows it for His purpose. We do not know exactly, but He allows it. For has anyone said to God, I have born, I have born chastening, I will offend no more. Well, some people do. They say, I have taken the discipline, and I will, I have repented, I will sin no more, I will offend no more. But some people know. It seems like they get permanent resident. Uh, you know PR? PR status in Changi. <laughs> uh, they come out and visit us for a while, then they go back in again, then they come out, then they go in again. Repeat offenders. Teach me what I do not see if I have done iniquity, I will do no more. Should he repay it according to your terms? Just because you disavow it, you must choose and not I. Therefore speak what you know. So we finish with men of understanding. Now from verse 34 to 37, he combines men of understanding and wise men. So this, this chapter is quite easy. Just uh, stating the obvious, you understand? Stating the obvious. But I tell you, I give you one, one, one question, you go back and think. The one more obvious. Huh? What, what is the shape of yellow? 
Okay. <laughs> that you not, you may not understand. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Anyway, you got nothing to do with it. chapter 34. Let's continue. Men of good understanding say to me, wise men who listen to me. Job, so everyone listen up. Let me tell you all, Job is like a fool. That's what he said. You all listen to me. Yeah. Job speaks without knowledge. His words are without wisdom. But chapter 32, he said that, uh, 33, he said, I will not terrify you, I will not be heavy on you. He lied you. You are not keeping to your word. Okay? Oh, that Job will try to the utmost. Terrible. That means uh, hang him up to dry. Uh. You know, give him the worst of the worst. Uh. Will try to the utmost. Because his answers are like those of wicked men. And my Bible got exclamation mark. For he adds rebellion to his sin. I mean, sin is one thing, but rebellion is demonic. The Bible says, right? Satanic. But he adds rebellion to his sin. That means he, he rebels against God. He claps his hands amongst us. Even in his suffering, he's saying Job. He's saying Job in his suffering. It's so um, uh, uh, rebellious and so on. And he will clap. Are you sure? I think Job was scratching, not scratching. <laughs> really, my Bible said he was scratching, right? He was taking the porcelain thing. But this guy, Eli, he claps his hands amongst us and multiplies his words against God. But not, not what he said. Surely no fear of me will terrify you, nor my hand be heavy. I only want to say as we end chapter 34, say what you mean and mean what you say. Otherwise, don't say. A lot of people say but don't mean. That is chapter 34.